Today, we're going to be taking a look at Elementor Beta 2.6 and some of the key new features that have been added into this pre-release version. Now, as always, being a beta version, if you download this and test this yourself, please do not use this on a live site. This is something that's still in development and there's going to be issues, bugs and quirks that could end up messing up your site. Hi and welcome to WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from your WordPress websites. If you'd like to learn more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and smash the bell icon to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at 2.6, the beta version of Elementor. And the key new feature that's been added is the ability now to work with Font Awesome 5 icons. This expands the library well beyond what you currently have. So it gives you a ton more options, some great looking icons we can start to use in our design. So we're going to take a look at that in this first stage, and then we're going to take a look at some of the other things that have been added in to this beta version that's going to be released very soon. So I've already gone ahead, hopped over into the dashboard of WordPress and opened up a page that has a range of icons on there. Now, once you do this, once the new version 2.6 is available, you're going to be notified when you start to edit or insert anything that's got an icon in there, that there's a new version and you need to update. Once you've updated, you're going to get access to 1500 plus icons that you can start to use in your designs. These are great icons, fully scalable and look fantastic. So let's take a look at what we have available now and how it's been implemented in this version of Elementor. Now, when we select or insert anything that uses an icon, we're going to get some more options. So let's choose this first section where we've got an icon. And we're going to come over to the content section. You can see this is now our icon that's already listed. What we have now is the ability to go through to the icon library. We can delete this or we can upload our own SVG file. Now we'll take a look at the SVG options in a moment. Let's stick with the icons itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click and we're gonna open up the icon library. Now you can see this has been implemented in a very, very nice way. We can come over and we can view all the icons. That's basically the regular, the solid and the brands. So everything will be listed in there. However, if you wanna filter these down to regular, solid, or brands, we can do that, and that will then filter this down to exactly what we want. If we want to filter even further, we can simply come into the filter option and we can type something in. So let's just say we want Amazon. You can see once we type that in, that will now filter out the icons, in this example, into the brands and the font awesome, specifically anything that matches that Amazon search criteria that we've just gone ahead and typed in. Now I can simply come over and choose the icon that I want. Now you'll notice at the moment, we have no way of inserting this. That's just a little quirk that we have because this isn't the final version of the beta. Once we mouse over, you can see the insert button appears and we can click on insert. That updates it now and we have that nice icon in there. If you want to scale that, we can easily come into the style and we can adjust the size on there to anything we want. And you can see because we're dealing with these font awesome icons, they're basically fonts. They'll scale to any size that we want and still look absolutely fantastic. So that's an easy way of being able to access those font awesome fonts, install them, use them on your website, and just really get creative with some great looking icons, all lined up in a very nice, simple browser that we can use. Now, the next thing we have in this beta version is support, native support for SVG or scalable vector graphic images. So let's go through the process of changing this image in the hero section and use an SVG image. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over, we're going to select this section, come to the styles, and in there we're going to come through, make sure we're on the background with the image. We're going to delete that from there and we'll say choose image. Now you can see I've already uploaded an SVG image and because we have this latest beta version of Elementor installed, it now shows us a preview of this particular image. Now, the thing to bear in mind when you're working with SVG images is where you get the files from. If it's somewhere you don't know, it's always worth making sure that there's something that's a reputable source because the last thing you want is some malicious code that'll end up damaging your site. Now, if you've never used SVG images before, take a look at the video that's linked in the description in the corner right now and also in the description below. It's going to get you up to speed with how you use SVG images, some of the benefits you have and different ways of actually creating them. That's going to give you a lot more insight than I'm going to cover in this particular video. However, we now have a preview of this. We're going to say insert media. Once we've done that, you can see that now drops the image in there for us and we can do everything we normally do. The position, we can come in, say center, center, for example. We can set any attachments to repeat. So we'll say we'll set that to no repeat. 
size cover that's perfectly fine and you can see now our svg image is installed and loaded directly into our elemental page builder so this is a great way now and a great addition of being able to use svg images and also being able to see them inside the media browser and also inside your page itself so i'm glad to see this has been something that's added into elemental it's great to see so the next new addition is inside the navigator itself now, if you've never used the Navigator, this is a very simple and visual way of being able to find every single element inside your page structure, select it, and then do whatever you want. So I've already got that docked on the right-hand side, and at the moment, we've got this heading selected, and everything looks exactly the same as you'd expect. However, if we choose custom positioning for this header, so let's just come over and just choose something like inline, and we'll say we want this to be absolute. Not too bother about what it does more a case of just demonstrating. So now we have this custom positioning available. If we come over to this entry inside the navigator, come to the right-hand side. Now you probably can't see this on my screen at the moment, but there's a little blue strip on the right-hand side. Once we hover over that, you can see we now get a new icon come in telling us custom positioning is available, and we can now go through and select that custom positioning and do other things to it. So it's a visual, easy way of being able to see exactly what positioning has been applied to any element inside your design, and then you can come in, select it, and do whatever you want with it from there. So again, one of the things that's not groundbreaking, but what it does do is it makes the whole process of working with this custom positioning considerably easier when using it in conjunction with a navigator. Now, when you work with Elementor, there are so many options available to you. Sometimes you come across something you haven't used in a while or you've never used at all, and you're a little bit stuck on how to use it. Well, in this version, they've updated things and given us more help options. So you can see whenever we select any widget, anything on our page at all, if we look at the left-hand side at the bottom, you can see we've got need help, and that will then open up the custom help for that specific widget. So for example, if we have this one, which is the edit the heading, Click on there, that'll open up the help section to do with the heading widget. So we get immediate help directly from there telling us exactly what all the different options are available and how we can utilize those. If we come back in and choose something different, scroll down at the bottom, need help, click on there, and you can see now that the help will open up. This time we've got the icon box widget and we've got help for that. So it's great to see that they're making the process, especially for people that are new to Elementor, an easy, quick way of finding help for any widget they're currently using on their particular page layout. Now that's just a quick overview of the new features in 2.6, the beta version of Elementor. If you'd like to test this out yourself, but like I say, only on a test site, please do not use this. I can't stress this enough. Please do not use this on a live site because it could end up completely killing your site, which is not something you want to do. However, if you want to test out the latest versions of Elementor, if you come into your dashboard, come down to Elementor and into Tools, once you're inside there, you have an option called Version Control. You can click on version control and at the bottom, you see it says beta tester. Now by default, this is going to be disabled. But if you want to test this out for yourself on a demonstration or test environment, all you need to do is select that, change that to enable, save your changes, refresh your page, and then jump over to the plugin section. If there's a new beta version available, you can see that on there. You can download, install, and test away. So if you'd like to follow along with everything I've covered in this video, you can do exactly that and take a look at it yourself. Now, if you'd like to find out how to get more from WordPress and Elementor, check out these great videos on screen right now or take a look at the playlists we have on the WP Touch channel. They're going to get you up to speed and get you building beautiful WordPress websites double quick time. Now, if you'd like to support the channel and help us keep creating great content for you, please consider using the affiliate links in the description below. It costs you no more money, but it does give a small percentage back to us for anything you purchase through there. As always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Touch, and until next time, take care.